This is the special council meeting uh, for the town of St. Andrews on Wednesday, September 6, 6.30 p.m. We are here today to discuss the wharf project. Uh, for those that are not in attendance, this is being uh, aired through Zoom and Facebook. If anyone has any questions uh, this evening, I don't think the PNOPR will work. How about cspear at townofstandrews.ca? Uh, and maybe if we're streaming online, someone would be nice enough to put Chris Spear's emails in the comments if that's at all possible. So again, that is C Spear, uh, S-P-E-A-R, at townofstandrews.ca. Let's get into the recording of attendance. I note that uh, we do have a couple absentees tonight. We've got Councillor, is anyone online, first of all, Mr. Spear? I don't believe so. Councillor Blanchard and Councillor Gumashell. So I think right now those are our two members of council that are not in attendance. Thank you, council, for being here. I know you had a long session last night, and the fact that you're back at the table again tonight means a lot. So thank you. And I do want to recognize that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Beskoto Mugadi people. Approval of agenda. It is really the one subject as discussed. Uh, there's a presentation and then a discussion, but it is around the market wharf. I'll be looking for uh, someone to move to approve the agenda for the special meeting. I've got Councillor Harland and seconded by Councillor Heenan. Any changes to the agenda? All in favor of this agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. That has been approved. Disclosure of conflict of interest? Not seeing any. Uh, so we are going to get into the presentation to kick off uh, today's meeting. We're fortunate to have uh, members of CBCL Limited uh, present for the Market Wharf Approach construction options. Want to welcome Corey McPherson and Dave Morgan. Thank you for being here. I'll ask you to come up to the podium just so the people at home can can hear you through the microphone. And, and once again, thank you for being here and, and look forward to seeing your uh, presentation. Perfect. All right. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm Corey McPherson from CBCL Limited. Uh, I'm a senior structural marine engineer, and just going to talk to you today about the Market Square uh, project. Uh, a little background: the existing approach trestle timber structures exceeded its anticipated design life. Uh, Town of St. Andrews initially proposed revitalization, revitalization of the Market Square. Uh, including demolition of the approach structure and raising the, the market square to account for climate change sea level rise. Uh, CBCL was retained to complete a geotechnical program and complete the concept design options. And what we have for you today are the options that we are um, we investigated. Uh, they are partial infill and repair of the existing approach structure, uh, an approach berm, a new steel pile concrete wharf structure and precast concrete caissons and girders. And the final one is a kind of a hybrid, a partial infill and a steel pipe pile uh, wharf. So the next slide. First slide shows the rehabilitation uh, option. So essentially Market Square will be brought up to the new uh, elevation and infilled as per the original plan. Um, we are proposing to demo the first 15 bents of the approach span uh, and existing timber crib. And we, what we plan on doing is uh, providing a transitional crib, timber crib, that'll just provide transition between the elevation of the market square to the existing height of the uh, approach span. And from that point, we are going to do uh, repairs such as the removal and replacement of the, the uh, ballast boxes. Uh, some deck repairs on the uh, composite timber decking. Uh, repairs to remove and replacement of 25 piles between grid lines 15 and 32. And uh, yes, and I already said the timber crib structure transition from the higher elevation to the existing elevation. So with this, the lifespan isn't as long as the other options. Any timbers that we're repairing, you can expect a 25 year lifespan. Uh, any remaining timbers will give plus or minus 10 years, could be shorter than that based on well, doing continual um, investigations of the wharf. Um, with this as well, like your existing approach span will remain as it is, so the higher elevation isn't, uh, isn't achieved in this option. But uh, there's potential for access to the uh, intermediate 
trestle and pier head during construction. Uh, there might be short timelines where it'd be shut down by the contractor, but uh, we believe there's potential for limited access during those repairs. Uh, the cost, yes. So we estimated the cost uh, to be 5.3 million, give or take, 5.367 million, sorry. And this includes all the, uh, the raised infill for Market Square, modifications to timber bracing on the intermediate truss, uh, trestle, sorry, uh, pile wrap repairs, and um, oh, yeah, I already covered that, sorry. Yeah, and the pile wrap repairs. Uh, we've estimated a construction schedule for this one of 21 months um, with a design period taking seven months and construction taking 14 months. The reason for the long schedule is the working with the tides and ripping out the timbers and just the limited amount of time you have to work in the, in the tidal zone there. So, yep, sure. For clarification councils, I see they have May 2023 to July 2024. That would probably be uh, May 2020. Yes, sorry, that is May 2024 to 25. Sorry, yeah. that's what it should be. My apologies. Yeah, May 2024 to July 2025. All right. The second option is again extending. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Do you do you mind if uh, I know sure. we could wait till the end, but I think probably option by option there might be good to ask questions versus jump back and forth. And and again we can get into the general specifics after. I just I guess my first question would be is why would we commence a project in May for 14 months and then potentially lose two summers at the war versus commence it. Is it because we have to commence it then or? Well, no, I did, we, we just commence put it in January. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would it be the difference of losing one summer versus 1.5 if, if that was to happen? Yeah, exactly. We, we just put uh, for a timeline standpoint here, we just, we used October. If we'd start a detailed design in October and uh, we just carried on from there. But yeah, if you phase it, you can plan to do the, some of the work or most of the work outside of the, the tourist season, but there's some work that will have to be done in the tourist season in, in those summer months, such as any kind of concrete. You can, like April, March, April, you can start looking at doing concrete in September, October, but once you start getting into the colder months, it, it gets a little bit more difficult. Thank so you. yes, the, these, these schedules here, we just kind of picked a, a date, but they can be spread over multiple seasons if that, that is the case. Well, oh. sorry, Councilor Ware. I'll go to you, Mr. Spear, in a second. Councilor Ware. Uh, I noticed you've mentioned pile wrap repairs. Do you intend to use wrap or jackets with grout on the inside of the jacket? Well, just the corrosion protection of the pile wrap system. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what was proposed before. It's but really more. They're calling it a wrap, but it's really a liquid, almost like a paint, if you will. And so it's for everything above the splash zone. So we do have anodes below the splash zone, but they don't protect anything that's not underwater. So it's a coating that goes on the steel piles above the high water mark. Well, I was just wondering. There's also the system of putting a jacket on and then about three inches of yeah. There's the whole way around. There's there's a there's a couple different systems. One is to you can actually grow it. You can form it off and grow it in and protect it. Uh, another one is there's actually a fiber wrap. Yep. that you can wrap around usually see them in circular piles they inject a resin put it on tighten it and protects it for certain spots on there so but just to go back Corey sorry yeah, so sure. I guess so council I guess for the construction period that's just to use round months is October 24th probably to, to the end of December 25 so potentially completely losing the summer of 2025 uh, Corey had said it can be done in phases but I think Somewhere like the end work can be done in phases, but once you start the approach work, I think that has to be just started and finished. You the can't do like start, yeah, the, yeah infilling. the infilling has to be done. In infilling and timber crib has to be done uh, immediately to to bridge that gap there. But then some of the repairs on the, I guess some of the repairs on the approach span or approach trestle may be phased or done in the summer months, but not affecting things too much, right? But again. That does come down to the contractor at the end of the day uh, and, and what holdups they did have there, right? So. 
Just sorry, and yeah, just as, and sorry, I, I get a little confused as talking the infill. But the other thing to realize too, council, that part of our funding was related to climate change, and I don't think this raises it. And so, if I'm, it not, only raises Market Square in a, in a small portion yeah. to access so the approach. Trussell. We'd have to get approval from our funding partners whether or not that be su sufficient, because original plans was to raise the approach by half a meter. In fact. Thank you. We can jump ahead to the next one. I'm sure there will be lots of questions at the end. Sure. So the uh, the second option uh, investigated was just providing a, a rock infill berm approach uh, all the way to the existing intermediate trestle. So this work would be done along with the market square infill. The elevation be raised the uh, half a meter for the climate change. Uh, abutment would be placed at the end of the rock fill to uh, to provide a transition to the existing intermediate trestle as it's at a half a meter lower elevation. Um, we have a couple, yeah. So that's a section through through the center of it uh, on the approach span. So as you can see, rock fill, imported fill, and uh, armor stone along the sides and paved paved surfaces. So. Um, yeah, so essentially be the removal of the entire approach structure. Uh, as I said, the raised infill and market square and the approach berm, new abutment. The anticipated design life of this one would be a 50-year design life. Doesn't provide the aesthetics of the, of the timber wharf uh, or the wharf structures. And it, it limits ability to utilize floating wharf structures, but as I understand, they're not really used too much on the approach span. Um, so that might not be too bad of a, a thing. So the the price on this one we estimated to be six million, uh, six million fifty seven thousand, and again that includes the rock infill modifications, timber bracing, the intermediate trestle, and and pile wraps. All, all the options will include the in the raised market square infill, and modifications to the bracing and pile wraps. So this one is estimated being twelve months for. Uh, for the overall structure, um, uh, design permitting tender and award would be six months. Uh, most of that, uh, more so concentrated on the permitting aspect of it. And construction is six months. So again, uh, it shows 20. Uh, it shows March to September, but we feel like this could be done outside of those of those dates. So, and we believe that it can be started and completed uh, in an off season. Off to our season. Um, sorry, yep. I, I don't mean to interrupt, Corey. Yep. The only other thing, sure. Council, that with this um, on the wharf on the current approach, there's a timber crib there that some of the boats rest on to do work and stuff, and that's going to be lost or have to be re relocated under that. And that was one of the initial concerns from the boating community was the loss of this crib that's a, I don't know about a quarter of the way down the wharf on the left hand side. I should just note too that all these options also uh, provide infill in front of the retaining wall. Um, if you go to the next slide there, in, in front of these, I know people at home probably can't see, but in front of this area, it, it brace that retaining wall there. All these options include that as well. I didn't specify that earlier. Um, third option that we looked at was just uh, providing a new uh, approach wharf structure. It'd be a steel pile supported cast in place deck. Um, this won't be as long as the initial uh, approach structure, or the existing approach structure, sorry. It'd be 82 meter long, and as I said, it would, be, it would consist of steel pipe piles. Uh, some of them battered for lateral loads, and some of them will have to be rock socketed because of that. Um, again, this will be raised to the same elevation as the market square infill, uh, so that we meet the climate change uh, sea level rise. and. The, then we provide a transition structure from the end of that wharf down to the existing intermediate trestle so that we can transition smoothly. Um, a couple things on this one. Transition spans, we can be designed for additional weight, uh, just in, you know, for future if we want to raise other wharves up or, or do some modifications. This uh, has anticipated design life of 50 years. Um, we'll also have timber sheathing and timber fender piles on the side of it, so that provides the aesthetic look of the, of the timber wharf. 
Um, now, with this with this option, uh, we believe that. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it in the guess in the schedule here next. So this option is uh, estimated at uh, 8.2 million, with uh, including Market Square, etc. Uh, estimated design construction schedule is 18 months, with design permitting tender award six months, and the construction season being the full 12 months. With the construction season, with cast in place concrete. Um, you have to do that concreting in warmer weather, so there's a fair amount of it here. So, as we said, we expect a minimum of one season would be lost in this option. Um, and we added additional time to again. We just put these these dates in there as placeholders, and uh, we added addi another additional time on there just for that cold weather concreting. And council, um, sorry, I, yep, should no. have, I should have put in the, we had the conceptual drawings, which you, you've had in previous reports. This is the one that there look like small pillars that are holding up like, almost like a bridge structure. It's concrete on concrete, mm -hmm. um, but it has to be cast in place, meaning the concrete's actually poured yeah. live here as opposed to being brought in and, um, you know, already assembled and just lifted into place. There are some flexibilities with some of these pile structures where you can put precast panels down as a deck, but you'd still need a topping slab. So you're still into cast in place concrete, which kind of in the next option, so, something similar to what I'm talking about. I guess, is there any questions on option three? All right, the fourth option we looked at is a <clears throat> precast concrete caissons, precast pre-stressed um, bridge girders. So essentially, this is a block and span type uh, block and span type structure where we'd have precast caisson units uh, brought in. Star, their weights would be low enough that they can haul them on the roads. You'd prepare mattresses underneath them and stack them and fill them with ballast, similar to a timber crib structure, only with concrete and in sections. And then the top of the deck would consist of double T precast neck skirters. They're typically used in bridge uh, bridge designs. Uh, we've used them once in a uh, cruise ship design, uh, cruise ship berth design, where we utilize the next beams supported on pile structures. So with this option, you'd have to land the next next girders onto these precast caissons, and you'd have a topping slab poured over top of them. Um, so again, this would consist of the removal of the entire approach structure. Um, <clears throat> and will be placed with this block and span structure that uh, is 82 meters long, same as the pile structure. Uh, wharf elevations would be matching the market square infill uh, for uh, climate change sea level rise, and its anticipated design life is 50 years. We could also include timber fender piles and sheathing into this one to get that aesthetic look uh, of a timber wharf. Um, I just noted in the slideshow here that they can, you know, to save on cost, they can be removed from the design but added in at a later date if, if needed. Um, one, a couple of things with this, a uh, little bit more uncertainty with the cost, crane requirements. We have some crane costs that we use in our estimate, but it's a fair size crane that we need to bring in here. So the variability in cost of renting the crane, uh, it's quite variable. Um, the stacked precast concrete units are not common for piers of marine structures. We've seen them. We've seen them stacked uh, as retaining structures. They're not common for pier structures. They can they can be used for that, but I may pose some difficulties when setting them. Some learning curves setting them on the mattresses. So this option here, uh, close to the piled option again, seven point eight eight four million with uh, everything included. And we have the same estimated construction schedule. Um, although they can precast the concrete and on in a plant and bring it to site, there still is topping slabs and in, in um, more concrete that has to be poured between the next beams to, to form the whole structure. So again, for this option, we're looking at one season being missed on the wharf. And the fifth option, if there's no questions on option four, the, the fifth option is the hybrid between the steel pipe pile and the infill berm. 
So what we're proposing is that we cut down the steel pipe pile wharf that we proposed in option three down to 40 meters and make up the difference with an approach uh, berm. In this option, we've extended the plan view of Market Square out uh, more than the other options to allow for more for, for room for shops on there. Um, we can modify that as, as needed um, in detailed design if we were to go to this one. But essentially consists of the same type of construction as the previous options with uh, steel pipe pile. Steel pipe pile, uh, steel pipe, pipe pile, sorry. Uh, some of them rock socketed in. Uh, timber fender piles and sheathing on the outside for that aesthetic look. Uh, has a 50 year design life. Um, and as I said, the cost could be reduced a bit with Market Square infill. So for this option, we are proposing or we um, estimated around 7.8 million, um, including the upgrades and expansion of the Market Square area. Um, estimated construction schedule is 13 months with six months for design permitting tender. All of them are pretty much the same just because of the, the permitting period and construction seven months so we feel that there's a potential to complete the construction of this one outside of a tourist season if scheduled in september there if, if the construction started right in september so you'd get your piles driven and your piles driven and your pile caps poured and then you'd pour the deck in in march april when the when the weather warmed up again and the last slide i have on here is just kind of a comparison of all the options that we presented. And with it, I have a couple asterisks beside a, a couple of them. Um, the single asterisk is just showing that it doesn't meet the, the elevation for this um, climate change sea level rise. Uh, that's the rehabilitation of the in, oh, existing approach span. And the, one of the two asterisks beside it are the ones that we feel can be completed uh, outside of a tourist season be completed yeah wouldn't have to take away from any of the any of the tourist season so that's my presentation sorry for stumbling through some of it thank you very much appreciate that uh council any questions okay councilor heenan well if i was to narrow it down um Council and your worship, I wouldn't think that we would do number one because it doesn't meet the environmental uh, the environmental change. Uh, it doesn't raise the elevation. So, in my opinion, option number one would not be to be looked at. That would just be my opinion. I mean, I'm no once again like last night. I'm no engineer. But I do know that if we're going to spend money, we have to uh, we have to have something in order to address climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Hannon. Any other member of council? All right. Uh, the good news about all this, Council, is because CBCL is our partner at any given time. Should a question uh, surface, is we go back and forth. Uh, Mr. Spears in touch with them regularly. Um, there's a lot of questions. I know that the public presentation is, is scheduled. Is that correct, Mr. Spear? Is the uh, CBCL is doing a, uh, also a kind of a public presentation in addition, are they? I guess this was about it, Your Worship. We can okay. do it. They'll do whatever we ask. So it's whatever next steps. Well, so, to a certain extent. So, so I guess <laughs> As he starts I, breaking into tears. I guess, my, <laughs> I guess my question is on that is... Um, these options, and there's more than what we had last time. So they, they haven't been... They haven't been taken out to the public for opinion right now. And we might all have opinions, but they haven't been properly vetted. Um, so I guess my question is, is what does that process look like for the public? Because when you're, when you're making a decision, whether it be $5.4 million, which again, I, I get your, your comments, Councillor Heenan, especially for something that could be, need another five, five, well, not five million, but it need another few million dollars in eight years, it's pretty concerning. But then when you have a, a decision that's 8.2 million and involves maybe shutting down the war for an entire year um, that that needs to be vetted as well right so I guess where does that leave us for next steps on public consultation well your worship I guess one thing is all these things have been presented to the public although it's been over a span of about a year and a half to two years oh, I get that but they all have been we had several presentations um, maybe just after the pandemic on these 
nonetheless, what maybe I would suggest is that we do some stakeholder engagements initially. And so for the wharf users, being both the commercial and the pleasure boaters, just to kind of get theirs feeling on the seasonal. And then if council wants, and then we could talk to the, maybe at a BIA meeting about the tourism aspect. And because in addition to the loss of the wharf, there's going to be traffic, obviously trucks and stuff running up and down the, the, the streets through the summer for some of these proposals. And we can go to a, you know, the, really the next step is just we have the conceptual drawings done. If you want to do a one more public presentation where we bring in the conceptual drawings and kind of have an open house concept where, you know, it's from our, you know, from my understanding of, of where it is, it's really aesthetics is important. The timing of the season is important and cost is important. So it's, you get a three pronged scale, if you will, and you're trying to balance them out, which, which takes the importance of all of them. And we just need input from the community. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think for those affected the direct most, it'd be nice to have them in a more quiet um, surrounding than having the whole community. But then maybe between now and maybe the second week of October, we'll have those, those engagements with stakeholders whether or not you want to do it in a council of the whole or just involve a couple of councillors. And then maybe towards the end of October, we look at a full um, full consultation period early November. Yeah, so the reason I, and, and you touched on so the reason that I think it's important to go back to consultation on this is last time we did this exercise, Shamcook Bayside wasn't paying for this. And now they're paying for this debt. So I'm not saying that we wouldn't value, I'm not saying they didn't participate last time, but there might be a lot more engagement the fact that now now they've got <laughs> a big deal of financials in behind it and the implications of the long-term community. So, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, the hybrid infill and steel pile was not something we discussed last time, was it? It was that hybrid option? I don't think that was ever it, shot. Uh, it might have been really fast, but it, yeah. it was certainly there because we never came up with any des new design options for this. We just pulled the design options that had been in previous reports uh, over the last year and a half, two years, and, and just consolidated them for this discussion. And the, the wild card for all of this was really the construction, the schedule period, that that was never a known. And so we did ask them to go and talk to contractors as their best way to do it, to find out at each of these options, what is your anticipation for completion? And so now that's, the, that's kind of the missing piece throughout this whole process. And now we know what that looks like. Sorry. And just one other thing, Your Worship. Yeah, so the public knows we've been trying to figure out a way to have access to the end of the wharf during this project. We haven't, without spending millions of dollars, to be honest, on additional cuts to get the tides and it's such a long wharf, we haven't come up with anything internally. But if someone has a suggestion on how to provide access while the construction is going on, please let us know if you've had seen experience in others and stuff, and we can talk about it. But that was a question with CBCL we had early on. And um, we even talked at one point, but it was a cost prohibitive, was having a twin wharf, like, and, but it was like, that take the project up to $10 million. And so we had to eliminate that fast. But uh, because of the tides and stuff, it makes it hard even to bring in floating wharfs because, you know, when the water's high, great. But as you know, uh, when the tide is out, almost everything up to the pier head is exposed. So it just makes it a little bit trickier now to provide access. And then if you add in fuel trucks and all that stuff, it it's just becomes a question of how practically you can do it, especially for something that you're probably not going to use in the future, meaning if you provide this temporary access, even if we can find one for five or six hundred thousand dollars, then you're still going to, you know, probably at the end of it, it's going to be just dis sold off or disposed or if rented, given to someone else. But, you know, we've talked about that in the past and we just have not come up with a good solution and how to provide access while the construction's going on. Is there an opportunity to have some type of because I, I think of floating docks, I think of salmon cages with rails, like, and again, I get the tides are up and down, but that's when it, but is there an option to have a partnership where you have a, a one season ferry where people, if they want to go whale watching can, and there's a premium that year, right? There's, there's got to be cost recovery, but if you want to get to the end of the wharf, it's, it's X number or membership, and we have some type of private operator drive and dock at the wharf, so that way there's a, there, like, there's a connection. Maybe it goes from bad examples. Maybe it goes from the Bayside port and connects. I, I don't know, right? But like, there, there's got to be some type of option, viable option that doesn't completely wipe it out. And if it does, 
council's going to have a big decision really weighing out short term versus long term like the economic impacts of not having a viable wharf in this community you got to wonder what that dollar figure is like versus you know find a creative solution so um and again i know it's not an easy thing and i'm not putting it on you that's a wee problem um but to not have a war for an entire season that would be that would be quite detrimental to the success of our community council where i just want to uh, go back to the public consultation thing and i understand there's been two or three years of public consultation on this but uh bayside and shamcook is in excess of 30 percent of the population they were not involved or invited to those consultations, but yet they're expected to pay 30% of the cost. So, you know, to be fair, they have to be consulted with and they have to uh, have the opportunity to participate in the democratic process. I, I think we're, uh, I'm making the subject where I think we're gonna be unified on that front that there's due diligence with a new community they got to make sure and the truth is these costs are a lot higher than what they were last time we went through consultation I think it's important to note in the public right now because not everyone is privy to the information of what happened but the town received a sum of money we went through the consultation process and then there was some also uh, some things that we need to do in order to make the project a reality and with COVID the, the costs went through the roof and what ended up happening is you have another couple million dollars where your funding partners are locked in at that certain amount so what it forced us to do and what the delay has been is we've had to go back to our funding partners and ask for more money so in order for the municipality not to be on the hook for the entire incremental amount that's gone up due to call it inflation or just you know the costs around COVID to be completely honest so it kind of gets us back some degree to square one which means that um, we have the opportunity to pick an option with that being said Consultation is important, but every year we hold on is a good reality that we might be back to square one and the costs are probably gonna go through the roof again based on what we're seeing. And then we gotta go back to our funding. It's a vicious, vicious cycle. So um, I can tell you from last time is there was no right or wrong answer. Um, some people in the public felt very highly about one option and then not so highly in the other, but we need to do consultation, but we also need to make a decision and I think at this point I, I think I'm going to say something that I believe should be explored and I've discussed this with council and I have not done it publicly um, is we have the biological station in St. Andrews with a wharf that is right now going through construction so you have a wharf that is 100% federally well re, I should say construction being replaced hasn't started um, but you have a wharf that is 100% federally funded 100% federally funded. Our wharf used to be federally funded when it burnt down. Basically, it was if you want a wharf, we'll rebuild it, but then it's yours. My concern is, yeah, we might be able to get through the approach with the debt levels, but what's going to happen when the end needs are placed in 15 years and it's a substantially amount? This is doubling the debt of our community essentially. So what, what is going to happen when the end, when when the end of the wharf needs are placed? Is this community able to afford it? We're not in a position where we can't have a wharf. But is there not an opportunity right now to talk to the federal government to say, why don't we have one super wharf together? They've already got a vessel down there. We're getting it by. And here's an opportunity for the federal government versus paying for one full wharf. And then every time we need money, they're paying a third of it. Because every time we need money, we go to them and they give a third. They're paying for 1.3 wharves. Why are we not do putting together one wharf and having a facility that actually we can all be proud of that has enhanced services? Um, and you look at the old approach of the wharf, what's the opportunity there? Maybe it, it's replacing it, maybe it's leaving it there. What if it was shops where you could expand the downtown to have little uh, kind of seaside shops along the wharf to enhance the shopping experience? There's such a big opportunity right now for the taxpayer of Canada to instead of fund 1.33 wharfs to have one and for the taxpayer of St. Andrews that is essentially on the hook for a third of this and this is not just a st andrews asset it is enjoyed by the region it is an economic driver for our province and I, i'm just worried about the longevity sure we could probably get through this time but what happens when the end needs done right like like we need to look at the bigger picture here to make sure that this asset is sustainable for our community 
for the next 50 years. And although these life cycles are 50 years, that's just one section of our wharf. The, the end is going to be a substantial bill. So there's some bigger conversations. And unfortunately, we're tight for time, but they, I think they need to happen. So that's my little rant on concerns over the cost of the wharf. Um, so I guess since is there no further questions, I appreciate the CBCL for being here and uh, the, uh, the long process this has been. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to follow up. Pardon? Okay. Oh, we do have a question, actually. Councillor Neal. Um, yeah. Chris, is it possible to put the presentation back up for a second? Um, and just one of the pictures, option three photo or something along those lines. I'm just wondering if you could explain, I guess I don't fully understand exactly where the rise happens in Market Square. Like, are we actually planning to raise Market Square completely or is it the raised rock wall transitioning from the existing level up to the wharf? So the Market Square would be increased to 9.34. Nine this wharf as well and then the last three spans of the wharf will be transitioning back down to the intermediate but what is this question this question is where's where the transitioning start just at the rock wall or where the black is in the oh, sorry, in, in here is where we start transitioning to the to the higher level where anything that's shaded gray is is transitioning up to that 9.34 meter level okay thank you it, it goes without saying that transition is going to significantly alter the look of Market yes. Square. Like your view of the water is going to be, I'm not saying gone, but a meter rise is quite substantial when you're looking across it, right? So oh, it's sloping down and then going back up again. Yeah, but we did have approval. We, we, we had to give the money back, if you remember, a few months ago, that support to raise the rest of the square, but it's a separate project. And so the long-term plan would be then to do a phase two of Market Square and bring the rest of it up to that level, more and, or less. And despite the optics, that's, that's not really an option for us. Like, if, if we don't rise that at some point, it's just all going to be gone anyway, right? So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions, I guess I should? Okay. Oh, Councilor Hurdle. Um, since we have engineers here, I'll ask this question. For those folks who may not have been down this road before, it might be beneficial to ask the question of, the simple question of why can't it just be rebuilt or fixed the way it looked the way that it does right now um that could i know that option <laughs> one sort of deals with that but uh, not exactly so i'll hand it over to you if you can explain for folks who maybe don't understand or see why we just can't have what we have now well if you build back what you have now you <clears throat> you get a much less design like anticipated design life for one with timber once we get into timber structures are usually around the 25 year mark um, anticipated design life now i know a lot of them go for a long time but uh, typically we kind of shy away from the timber options just because they don't provide much more of a design life than these other options with cast in place concrete and steel piles and like protecting the piles they'll typically provide 50 plus years uh, especially in, in concrete caissons and not, not they're more robust so I think the timber options are <clears throat> Yeah, I guess you're not getting as much bang for your buck, I guess, in a, in a way to say it, when it comes to design life. And also connections get, if I'm going into, going into a rabbit hole here, but the connections start getting uh, very difficult and more expensive and the corrosion along and the rot and everything along with that. So I understand I, I, I like to look at the timber wars ourselves, myself, but uh, we just we're limited by design life. Councillor Ware, and then we'll go to Councillor Heenan. Uh, what type of timber are you looking at? Have you considered green hearts? And are they still available, I guess? <laughs> I guess they are at a price. Well, what we typically use, um, we usually call up <clears throat> both like public works and, and other wharves. Uh, if it's, say, timber cribs and stuff, we use Douglas fir and, and, and treated and everything like that. <clears throat> the treatment these days also doesn't hold up as well as the creosote that we can't use anymore either so typically that's what we use uh, I think with the, when it comes to piles I don't, I don't want to be misquoted here but I can't remember quite the species of the timber piles that we we go after that we use and 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 the treatment and everything so yeah the, the green heart comes from South America and it does have a life expectancy in excess of 50 years Oh, okay. 
the ones at Bayside are now 64 years old. Now they're getting in rough shape, but mm -hmm. uh, they also have, you know, 75,000 ton ships coming up against them. So, mm -hmm. you know, okay. entirely different uh, wear. But last time I priced them were $6,000 a piece. So, yeah, I could get used here. <laughs> yeah. So. So. Hmm. yeah, no, I don't, I personally don't have much experience when it comes to using that that wood there but yeah if the price sounds kind of high councilor heenan thank you worship and council first off this has been very informative and i do appreciate it um this is a question that's kind of um loaded but i will ask it if this if you were living in this community with your family and you were a taxpayer here and you knew we needed a wharf which option would you go with? I feel I'm kind of biased to answer that question. Oh, I've been okay. looking at everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying it, it's like, you know, we as a council have to rely on what people, like we can have public consultation and that is absolutely 100% needed. There's no question in my mind. But we have to look what's best value for the buck. and. That is my, that's my problem. We have to look at the private sector that used the wharf. We have to look at the economics. We have to look at the time frame. We have to look at the viability. We have to look at the length of this wharf structure going to be sound. Because we have to face reality, or I feel we do, that if we don't do something, we may not have a wharf. And and we're, we've already got a weight restriction on it now, which will continue to decline. And so we have to really, we have to really push on this. And as mayor said, you know, if we can come up with a partnership with the federal government, whatever. But the point is we'd have to do is we have to make sure that this town has a wharf. And we have to make sure that it's functional because it's no use putting money into something that's not functional. And we have to make sure that it's environmentally, because that's what we have to do as, as a town. We have to make sure that it's, uh, that it's the elevation meets the criteria, that we don't have to worry about it for 50, 100 years. So it's just that, like, I have an opinion which one I like, but <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean that's the one to go with. I'm not a timber fan, <laughs> you know, but anyway. I just wanted to put it out there and just say, you know, what would you think? You don't have to answer it, but I just wanted to put it out there. Thank you. <laughs> For Councilor Harlan. I was just wondering about the lifespan of the end of the wharf. What, what's it in, what are you anticipating the lifespan of that section would be? I can't recall what the anticipated lifespan of the intermediate. You're talking the intermediate in the, in the pier head? Yeah. Yeah, I can't recall. What the what the remaining life is on them? I know there's been some inspection reports done on them, but uh, I can't recall right now. I'm not entirely sure when they were. I think it was intermediate fifty or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, the intermediate, as far as I remember, and BB's here. You may remember better than me. I think the intermediate portion was replaced during the um, after the fire too, as well as the pier head. Yeah. So, so both replaced in the 90s. One reason we want to do this pile wrapping is to extend the life. That, that's, that's the thing. Though they rot out, then it'll shorten it out. But if we get that done, that should give us another 40, 50 years. Okay. Thanks. Great. Any other member of council? We had a second round of questioning there. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. I know you. we have questions after the fact. I, I know yeah. we can reach out to you. So thank you very much for... Uh, given the presentation, but also uh, for the public to be aware of some of the, the challenges. But I guess to go back to the question is, if you use a different term, call it value, the, 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 for return on investment, it, there's no question the infill berm is the best all around return for what you're paying, for what you're getting for life cycle. But then it doesn't take into consideration the, the, the cosmetics of the downtown, the look and feel of a heritage district. It doesn't take all that into account. And the other thing that I'm aware of the doing the infill is, as much as I hate to say it, anyone that has erosion over the next 50 years for two miles on each side of that is gonna point at that being the reason. And the other thing is I think there'd be a valid argument to wonder what the 
environmental impacts would be of changing that that dramatically with the current and everything else. So whether it be legit or not around erosion, I guarantee you the municipality would be blamed for everything along that coastline because they did that. That's just the way if we even put in a sewer line. People on each side for kilometers say the reason <laughs> the reason erosion's happening is because the sewer line was put down two blocks down. Like it's it, it's just being aware of the reality of what we are as a municipality. So there's no question though if you look at the pure math behind it the infill berm with the life cycle the cost and the ability to add more onto it in the future is by far if you look at dollars and cents and life cycle the best option but is it the best option when we consulted the public last time the public made it perfectly clear that did not like that look for our downtown so that's what it's that's the whole consideration of what we have to weigh in so thank you very much for the presentation i appreciate it uh, we're going to kind of at this point transition from presentation to uh, a little bit of a discussion is that the goal tonight mr spear was that the the gist of what you wanted to accomplish yeah i guess i'm looking for next step your worship so if consultation is what you're asking for maybe there's not much sense feel free to get into discussion but if you're really looking for the public input maybe it's like other things you'll want to get their input and then to help you shape your final answers in a couple of months time um, just so you know the it looks like we have until the end of 2026 to finish the project um, just to, so we're we're not on fire need to get this decided although we are hoping to be able to start it next fall but it's we've got a little we got time yeah as much as I don't want to delay it the fact that we're new community uh, unless someone feels different we, we have to open up the consultation and again the numbers are completely different than what they were last time we did it um, so uh, I think there was a way that we had kind of all the options up on boards we had like an open house people came in people answered questions mm -hmm. on it and then they gave us a lot of we had a lot of feedback last time so I think that's what this new council needs. I know the councillors in the wards, they need to talk to some of some of their residents to educate them, to let them know that this has major impacts. This is not a simple project. This is this is a multi-million dollar project for a community of under 3,000 people. So it's got major implications. But I think we all know that the community needs a wharf. So that's not kind of a, a debate that we're looking at. It's just picking the right option. Um, and uh, there's multiple options here, as we know, five. Um, and uh, they all should be looked at and they all should be valued. They should be all evaluated. So uh, if anyone else feels different, I think the next step would be to hear from the public on this versus us go too far down. Um, and the other thing that's important to note, I referenced the new community. Um, this actually was never debated by the current council that the, the six councillors that were here before, as far as I know, the deputy mayor and myself are the only ones that are around this table here tonight that actually were part of the consultation last time. So that's why it's important for all of you to make a decision. Even if you're a new ward councilor or existing, it's, it's important for you to be part of this process. And again, it's such a major step that I don't think we have an option other than to do it unless, again, council feels contrary because I'm just one voice at the table. So we worship, if you like, uh, as you know, I'm going to be out for a couple of weeks. So I won't be here in time to make a report for next meeting. I'll be here for the meeting. but. If you like, well, for the first meeting in October, we'll present a plan for public consultation to be done between October and November to get it done as quickly as possible and then uh, can debate it in the new year. I think uh, that works. Yeah, when you get back, as, probably as soon as possible, we should lay out that process and and uh, yeah, go from there. But that's, that's more than fair. Uh, anyone else have anything to add, though, on that one? I bet you didn't think it was going to be as quick tonight, did you? Okay. I'm going to jump back to the actual, and you're good, Mr. Spear? Okay. All right. Um, so there is nothing under new business that takes us to question period. Glad to have a number of people um, and a number of users at the wharf that are here and some people like Mr. Chamberlain have experience here. Is there any questions uh, from anyone? Is there anyone online, first of all, tonight, Mr. Spear? Should we maybe just do the question, ask them to raise their hand, and then we'll come back to them after we do the room? I have a couple of questions online when you get a chance to your worship. Okay, sounds good. So uh, if anyone is online and would like to ask a question, please uh, raise their hand and uh, they will have an opportunity. And while we're waiting, Mr. Spear, you have some online. We might as well go through some of those. So there's a question. Um, one of the oh, tourist, um, or sorry, the whale watching businesses has a building in the area and it's not listed or it's not shown it's just it's a high level design it wasn't 
purposely removed. It was just uh, not included as they were putting this together at the last minute. So, you know, these are just high-end conceptual drawings, not a final plan of, of, of the wharf. But if it's the building I'm thinking about, that that has to be a conversation that we have. Absolutely. As part, as part of the consultation, we're going to have to, and I know you put it in your report, that is that is one of the three main decisions this council is going to have to make about the future of that particular uh, location, whether it remains where it is or, or moves. But either way, from this construction, I think it's safe to assume that that building is going to have to move during the infill period either way, right? We Correct. We that from last. Um. And, and, and the ownership is aware of that, that at least during the yeah. construction period, it would have to be moved. Um, the question about the environmental impact study. So it, it's a mixed answer on that, meaning we went through the province for the environmental impacts assessment, and they deem it as the rock infill one, so kind of the most extreme example. And they said it's just a replacement, and so they didn't require a full EIA. All they required was to do an assessment of... Uh, of uh, barn swallows to see if there's any living underneath the wharf and along the shoreline. And so that was all that was required, which we completed, and, and to date they've given their A-OK. -A that hasn't been worked in the projections. As you know, a full EIA can get ex extremely expensive, but th that's up to council, and depending on the, on the way they take. Um, there was, I'll just mention, there's also a period for Indigenous consultation, which we did complete. And that, and that process is complete and, and uh, they're happy to continue. And there's a question, is the wharf considered a heritage property? I don't think it's listed. I'm not saying it isn't. I just don't think it's listed under the heritage register formally. So that's off the top of my head response, but I'll, I'll get back to Ms. Kohler, who's on our heritage board, and investigate that a little deeper, if it's been officially designated or not. But to the top of my head, without digging into the records, I don't think it is but it could stand to be corrected if anyone else knows. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. And I think just back on the environmental assessment, I think if we were to pick the infill berm option, that whole debate would be a lot a, a lot more of a conversation. I'm not saying that it's not relevant for the others, but that is that is a significant uh, change in, in, in the pattern. So that one in particular, would that would be something that would be debated as part of that one. I'm not saying it won't be the others, but that option it certainly would be. But I don't think, I think we'd be getting ahead of ourselves to debate that at this time. Absolutely. So, uh, Chris, you said there was a business consultation process that has happened already that took place earlier in, in the um, discussions? Sorry, a consultation with users? Businesses, yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's just in general. So I was saying that it would probably be good to have a stakeholder engagement. So oh, okay. the last Sorry, couple of three times we've just done full rooms, but. It, can get pretty uh, hectic. We had big crowds, you know, 75 to 100 mm -hmm. people. So if you can bring along the businesses, and, and certainly the users of the wharf would be the most affected. So it would be easier, and, and not a lot of people want to get up in a public presentation and make statements. So if you had smaller groups, you could go and just talk about the reality and get their input. You'd probably get a, a better discussion, in my Great. opinion. The, the, Thank you. In the last consultation period, uh, there was definitely a high percentage of we'll call it wharf users that participate and provided feedback. Even the number of members of the yacht club provided letters and things. There, was a, there was a lot of engagement for the people that use it. So is, was there ever a report done or was that information consolidated for the, for I guess all of the councillors except for the mayor and the deputy mayor? Like do we have access to that, those previous records? We, we, well, I sent out a report about a month and a half ago that had all the, that included all of that? that? Inc well, the highlights of all of it. When I say the uh, highlights, there's, we, there's a, uh, there'd be, I'm not kidding, probably a couple of bankers full of reports we've done over a few years, but I've, I've taken these options that we've been discussed over the last two or three years and, and, and gave you kind of the update of where we okay. are right but now. But the letters and things like that, that, that could be pulled. They were, they were all kind of consolidated in a council package it was yeah. a thick one I'm sure. um, but yes all that all those old le like those letters people wrote before they're all still they'd still be all on file 100%, yeah. yeah so those are all accessible sorry and I misunderstood your question so if you want copies of those letters they are certainly available yeah. okay um, that's it for online anyone in the room have any questions that they'd like to ask it's a good time because CBCL is in the room too so I'll put you back on the hot seat, hot seat but yeah come on out Come right up to the mic so people can hear you uh, online to hear the question. Sure. Hey, it's just something that popped into my head when I was listening to you. 
Oh yeah, my name's Tyler Doherty. Um, just a question that popped in my head when I heard you speaking. You said you received funding for the project, for the whole project. How much was received and how much is left of that money? Okay. Okay, because I know it's been a long time, right? Yeah. I didn't know if there was money constantly going out of that for different services. That, you know what I mean? No, no. Sorry, uh, for those online, I didn't turn on my mic. So, the uh, the approval we actually got this week, the final confirmation for the additional funding is about seven point eight million. Okay. You know, for what we've paid out in fees to CBCL is under fifty thousand dollars. I think it's just because we keep re keep doing these reports. And so it's a 70-30 split. Okay. So the town, I think, um, we borrowed, on top of my head, I think it was about 1.3 million that we have to borrow to pay for it. Okay. We're gonna take some out of tax funds and reserves and then the rest is coming from our granting partners. Thanks. Just on, on top of that, what we can use that 70% of funds on is very, very limited. We couldn't put that into general operation or anything like that. It is very restricted to what that, that percentage of funds can be used yeah, for. Yeah, I mean, they basically took a look at what we proposed and said it's for this, we had to take wharf measurements, how much it's gonna expand. So it's really rehabilitating what's what's there right now or replacing with certain, these options that are before you. Perfect, any other questions? Mr. Chamberlain, come on up. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, B.B. Chamberlain, the ex-Warfinger, or past Warfinger, whichever way you want to put it. Uh, two things that I'm, I was thinking of while the presentation was on. One would be if the wharf is uh, sided with rocks, uh, you might want to think of liability. As you know, uh, some of you know, I sit down the point quite a bit, and the number of kids and parents who walk those rocks. I've never seen anybody fall, but the possibility is there. And the other item is uh, further to what you were speaking on, Your Worship, is uh, a couple years ago, more than a couple, we had uh, dredging done. Inside of two years, that was completely refilled. That's how fast it happens. The only thing we accomplished in doing was cleaning all the wire rope and everything else out of, the, out of the bottom. But once that was gone, there was nothing to catch the silt and the silt flew down very easily. Just a point. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, to add on to that, some of the public feedback last time is they do a lot of repairs at the end of the wharf. And if you put the rock there, it's not possible. Um, access to the beach was a concern. If you do all rock across the front, other things that hurt is when you look at the tides and how dramatic they are, think of all the things that can get caught up in the rocks and the smell associated with it with the rocks. So there was a lot of feedback on why the rock option might not be the superior, and I use the rock very, I'll we'll call it the infill berm. Um, but yeah, though, those are all valid points and, and certainly appreciate them. Anyone else? All right, well, at any time, you're certainly welcome to uh, ask a councillor or write in. So appreciate everyone for being here. Councillor, Deputy Mayor, comments, anything from anyone today? Okay. You almost feel like you guys had just met very recently. Uh, I will save everyone from any more comments since I already did my rant. Um, and there's no need to go to closed session this evening, obviously. So I'll be looking at 7.31 p.m. Uh, motion to adjourn about Deputy Mayor Akaji and seconded by Councillor Hurdle won that one, Councillor Heenan. All in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. Aye. This meeting aye. is adjourned. Thank you.